Hi guys, welcome to Photoix. Um, I wasn't planning on doing a video like this, but um, on one of the forums that I'm on, nothing related to photography, just another forum I'm on, um, someone was talking about cameras and um, I just offered a bit of advice on something and they uh, sent me a private message asking about something else, which to be honest I hadn't really thought about. Um, basically he was asking me um, he's just bought a Nikon uh, D five thousand one hundred, and he's getting confused with all the different picture sizes and the different formats on the camera. Now, ever since I started photography um, about ten years ago, I pretty much started on RAW straight away. I never really shot with um, JPEG, so I never worried about the different sizes and the different compression levels on it. Um, I just shot RAW straight off. Um, so it's not something I'd ever really given much thought to. But um, it was, I thought it was a really interesting question. Uh, so I'm just going to maybe quickly go through uh, the different sizes and compression levels and tell you what I think on it and what I think um, you're better off using. Um, obviously there's always situations where you might want to use a different one, but um, I'll just go through them uh, briefly and... Uh, and tell you what I think about them. Okay, so I've got my D3100 and in the menu uh, you can see it's got uh, image quality. Uh, just for this video I've just set it on to basic and um, it's on JPEG basic at the moment. Um, your camera might have different options um, I know some cameras can shoot in TIFF um, but for the purposes of this, we'll just stick with JPEG Basic. Now, when it says Basic, um, that refers to the level of compression that the camera uh, gives the image. Um, if you think on a computer, when you get large files, um, you can compress them, uh, what we often call zipping or uh, rawing. Um, that's basically what the camera is doing: is compressing the large picture file. And it does this quite often by actually throwing data away. Now if we think of the specs of this camera, the D3100, um, often DSLRs nowadays are sold on their megapixel count. Um, this camera is sold as a 14.2 uh, megapixel camera. Or around there, I think it's 14.2 or 14.8, something like that, but basically 14 megapixel camera. Um, basically, what that means is the number of pixels on the sensor across and up, so it's sort of a, a, a mathematical equation, if you like. Now, the sensor measures 4,608 pixels across, so wide, by 3,072 pixels high, which gives you, uh, when you multiply them together, uh, around 14 million. So there's 14 million of these pixels. Um, if I demonstrate the screen, so we could have um, 4,608 pixels if this was a sensor across, and then um, 3,072 pixels up that way. So basically, um, when you take a photo, the sensor records all this and it uses each one of those pixels to record a bit of data. Now if you um, had say a 10 megapixel camera, obviously the uh, sensor is going to be slightly smaller width ways and slightly smaller um, and the pixel density of the sensor at least, the physical size of the sensor would be the same but the, uh, the pixel density of the sensor would be slightly different. So when we're talking about basic, normal and fine, all we're talking about there is the compression now BASIC is going to compress the files a lot and that's going to throw away a lot of data so basically it's taking uh, data that it thinks isn't necessary from certain pixels and it's throwing that away and once that information is gone uh, you can never get that back. Normal does the same thing but not quite as intense and of course FINE um, hardly throws any data away at all. Now if we look in the menu you've also got image size and we have large, medium and small. And you'll see in this particular camera next to it, it also says um, a number at the end. Um, small shows you the size of the pixels it's using 
and then it says 3.5M. That's referring to megapixels, so with the small setting you're using 3.5 megapixels, with the medium setting you're using 8 megapixels, and with the, uh, with the large setting you're using the maximum 14.2 megapixels. So basically um, the camera is sold as a 14.2 megapixel camera because that's the maximum it can shoot. So when you choose either small or medium you're actually disregarding 14.2 megapixels and you're using just 3.5 megapixels of that. So in uh, marketing terms now when they thrust megapixels down your throat even though it's not really that necessary basically by using the small mode you're throwing away uh, the majority of your megapixels and you're only using 3.5 of them. Uh, I'm going to set that at 3.5 megapixels and if I choose basic that is going to give me a very small and a really not very good quality picture and um, that's kind of getting into um, little compact camera realms there so if you've got a camera of this specification there's really no point in having that set at small unless you know for certain that you need a really small photo um, very quickly like maybe a passport photo or something but then even then I still would not recommend using that setting again the same for medium you're throwing away a hell of a lot of data um, before you've even seen the photo because it does this in camera as you take the picture so that once you've taken the picture there's no getting that data back so on image size always I would recommend putting it at the largest you can in this case is uh, 4608 by 3072 which is the full size of the sensor and image quality as I said uh, earlier I pretty much always shoot in RAW and that's going to be a different video I expect explaining that so um, for the purposes of this I'm going to go for JPEG fine that's going to keep the most amount of detail and data that I can get and it's not going to throw away too much information that I might uh, want to use when it comes to editing a photo on a computer All right, I think I'm going to demonstrate this uh, in a slightly easier way to understand I think um, this is a a masterpiece picture that I just drew. Now we're going to uh, pretend that this is the uh, full size of the sensor so this is a 14.2 megapixel image. This is what you would get um, straight out of the camera in the highest setting in uh, JPEG fine. And uh, with this I could blow it up a little bit bigger and I could say I could crop it uh, there to expand that bit but that is the full size and um, all the data is contained in there. Now say I selected the small size um, so it would be JPEG small what that's actually doing is halving the size of the picture the size of the data that's captured so I would be throwing that away and I'd be replacing it with that as you can see, that's quite a bit smaller than all the data that I just threw away. So there's our 14 megapixel image, and there is our 3.5 megapixel image, which is uh, equivalent of the JPEG small. So you spent all that money on your 14 megapixel camera to get a nice big clear image like that and you're throwing all that data away and replacing it with that. Now to demonstrate the compression um, let's come back to our 14 megapixel image on JPEG fine. Now on JPEG fine all the data from the pixels that was recorded would be kept um, but as you decrease that down to say uh, JPEG medium you're in essentially squashing the data into a smaller um, smaller area although the picture itself is going to be the same size the quality of the data contained in it is going to be reduced because you're throwing away parts of the data so you're going to lose some of your colour, you're going to lose some of your sharpness and more importantly 
if you've slightly overexposed or slightly underexposed your image, um, you're going to have a real hard job recovering that in software. Whereas from the full size JPEG fine, you could usually have a little bit of leeway um, to bring the highlights down or uh, bring the shadows up. But um, as you reduce the file quality, you're actually throwing that data away for good. So although the picture is still going to be this size, you're actually removing data from it. So if you imagine we've halved the size of our picture by going to JPEG small, if we then go to JPEG small and basic, then your picture is going to be, um, the quality is going to be greatly reduced and you're not going to have any room to uh, edit your photos. Um, if you do try, you'll start getting all sorts of artifacts, uh, pixelation, all things like that. So it's really not going to do your image any good at all. So again, I reiterate, if you don't want to shoot raw, which is perfectly fine if you're a beginner, because it's uh, a whole different thing to get into, then choose the biggest you can, which would be the full size of the sensor, in this case 14 megapixels. So um, that would be the large setting. And choose the least amount of compression, which would be the fine setting. Okay, I hope that's helped a little bit. Um, I know it's a hard thing to try and explain just with words and without properly demonstrating it. Um, but basically, um, the medium and the small settings, in my opinion, aren't really very useful. I don't see the point of spending all that money on a, a camera that can shoot at 14 megapixels or more and then throwing the data away before you've even started. Um, so if you've just bought a DSLR, it doesn't matter what make or what uh, model it is, my advice um, is always to shoot at the highest quality at the lowest compression. So it's usually going to be JPEG large and fine. Um, I'll probably do another video later about RAW as I've uh, started talking about different file types. Um, but that does get a bit more complicated. But if you want the absolute best image quality you can, then that's the way to go. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I know it's a bit uh, difficult to follow sometimes. Um, if you have any questions about this or about anything else, then just leave a comment in the box below. Or you can contact me on Twitter. I'm at Photoix. Or you can visit the website www.photoix.co.uk and you can leave a comment or a message there as well. Thanks very much.